Welcome everybody uh, for the demo of the developer portal of ABN AMRO. My name is Koen Abels and together with Evelyn Albers and uh, Brandon Lynch, I will present what we've developed in the uh, last few years. Uh, ABN AMRO is a Dutch bank within the Netherlands, one of the major three players. Uh, our strategy is to uh, provide banking for a better for generations to come. Uh, and with it, we support our clients transition uh, to sustainability. We reinvent the customer experience and build a future-proof uh, bank. That's our, our strategy as a company. And the developer portal that we offer is a crucial part of that strategy. With it, we uh, provide APIs. And APIs are nothing new, but APIs are new to banking. So our goal is to provide clients with the ability to control their finances in any way they want. So if they want to do it via mobile, via internet banking, or via APIs through their own applications, that should be uh, possible. Uh, especially for the corporates, that's our main focus uh, on, uh, on this point, that we offer uh, API products uh, to, to corporates to do so. And now I would like to give the floor to Brandon to give you a good introduction to all the uh, documentation that we provide. Well, thanks, Kuhn. Um, as Kuhn said, my name is Brendan. Um, I'm a technical writer uh, in the API Strategy and Developer Experience team. I'm going to demonstrate uh, the findability and navigation on our external developer portal, as well as give you a brief outline on our API documentation. Um, so it's important to note that we built the portal for all our clients and users and not as a platform to market or showcase our organization. Uh, with this in mind, we designed it with the same ease of use as a customer facing website and led by intuitive navigation and findability as two guiding principles. So we don't want to sell our APIs to a user, but instead help them to find what they came to find. So as you can see, uh, when you enter the, the homepage, uh, you're presented with all the relevant and topical entry points at a glance. You can see our API products, as Kuhn mentioned. You can check out the latest news, um, you can see how to get started with our APIs. You can read our developer blogs. Um, you can see some featured APIs, how to go from code to customer, and how to innovate with us. So um, everything is included here, and everything is accessible through this homepage. So we cater to all kinds of users, including developers and business users, and also experienced and inexperienced users. Um, so for example, if you can quickly find what you came by looking at the navigation bar, and users can deep dive directly into the API products and the documentation. And I'll talk you through this a little bit more soon. Uh, for new users, they can click on the basics tab and they can learn how to get started with our APIs. Uh, this process is described with the help of a left navigation menu. Um, as we're always trying to improve, uh, we really value our customers and users' feedback. So step five. So it's not a mandatory step, but our clients, uh, they can contact us and provide feedback if they think it's uh, necessary. And then for companies um, who are interested in partnering with us, they can click on the Partner tab. So here they can find information about ABN AMRO Ventures, um, how to contact us, how to join our community, and they can check out our venture portfolio. Um, my colleague Evelyn is going to talk you through the community and support page in a little while. But for now, I'll take you through the API documentation. So if I go back to the, API, or go back to the header and I click on API products, um, what I initially see is for new users, they can check out what is an API, and they can also see the latest news. And they're uh, greeted with a, a tiled list of our APIs. So we also use tags to filter our APIs. So you can see we have the accounts tag, payments tag, and treasury tag. And uh, this is a good decision we made because this future proofs um, our APIs. So as we, add, as we add new APIs to the list, it'll be easy for users to find them. And we also use uh, the statuses. So this is a live status or early access status to make it easier for people to see, okay, so um, is, is it live currently? Can we access it now? Is it in production? So um, it's, good for, it's good for all that. And another thing we do is we offer an overview and um, documentation. So if I click on the overview of one of the products, um, so you can see that uh, we present the features of the API at the top. We provide a summary and an overview. We give a list of requirements and um, related brands, some PSD2, in this case, information, so how it works. And we also give you information about how to try it out in our sandbox. 
So if I go back to the API products and I click on one of these uh, business account APIs and I go to the documentation. So this is our reference, reference documentation and uh, we provide everything a developer should need. Um, our specifications, they are written in YAML and published using a docs code approach. So this means that we use a repository, uh, pull requests, version control, approvals, and pipelines. And all our APIs go through checks to ensure that they meet required standards and that the language we use um, is up to is easy to understand. So one of the first things you see is uh, you see a short description. You also see the version number of the API. Um, we also have a search box. So for example, if I am a user and um, maybe a developer and I want to search a specific method, maybe a get method, I will search get. And the list is a clickable option list, so which I can click. Um, it's also easy to find information regarding requirements, um, sandbox and production access details, uh, tutorial. So when I click on tutorial, uh, this tutorial describes how to connect an application to the business account inside API in this case. And we also provide a link to Postman, which I've already um, opened. But if I click on it, it will open this. And um, here, um, say a user can test the functionality of the API. They can interact with it. So this is a very useful tool. Uh, there's also information regarding release notes, so all the current releases and what, what, we, what has been changed, authentication information, um, OAuth credentials, and generating API keys. And then finally, they can uh, see sample requests and sample responses that are also interactive that they can click on. So despite our effort uh, to make everything as clear as possible, there are times where a user will need some help. And now um, Evelyn is going to talk you through about our approach to community and support. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, so I'm Evelina, and I will talk you through the support and the community part of the portal. So as Brandon just mentioned, um, we try to explain everything as good as possible, but if a user needs some help or there is an issue, we have the support page they can go to. Um, the support page is very uh, important to us because yeah, we know that the user really wants a quick fix for their, their question or their issue. So we have improved on it a lot uh, the last year, and uh, one of the things is that we have added uh, multiple categories uh, based on a job to done for the user. So for instance, if you have a business inquiry, you can click here or you need technical help or you're ready for production or you have a production uh, change or set of change, then you can uh, easily click on one of these um, tiles. And if you feel like that's not applicable to your case, you can go to everything else and still uh, contact us. Um, another way uh, is to check the FAQs, so that's a way to immediately get some answers uh, to your question. Um, so if you click on one of the APIs, you can quickly, quickly scroll to the FAQs. If your uh, question is not in there, you can scroll down and contact us by a contact form. On the support page, you also have the status and maintenance page, so if there's a uh, an incident or something, uh, an issue, uh, uh, something bigger, then you can see if, if uh, we're working on it here. One of the other things that we uh, did this year based on customer feedback was um, uh, making a new page. So that's the what is an API page. Um, we heard from our customers that sometimes the concept of an API is still a little bit uh, yeah, uh, tough to get and also what you can do with it. So we thought it would be good to give them a little bit more context on yeah, why do we do APIs? What is it actually? And um, yeah, what they can do for you. So uh, in a more broader sense and what they could build with, for instance, uh, our APIs. And we've uh, received a lot of uh, positive feedback on this. Uh, and we also made an API guide where you can uh, have a checklist of everything you need. So, um, yeah, people are fully prepared to, to go through the API uh, integration process. Um, yeah, and now I will go through the community part. So, um, the core of our community is uh, sharing knowledge and also inspiring people. And we do that in multiple ways. So we have uh, content in a form of blogs and uh, videos. So on our developer blog, we cater to uh, a lot of uh, different audiences. So if you like the more tech part, you can filter on uh, on, that, that, uh, on those kind of uh, content or you want to have more innovation or you're interested in uh, our use cases, how people or uh, organizations uh, use our APIs, you can quickly go through there. 
Um, let me go back. Um, so if we also want to co-create with our community, that's really important. Um, so we have uh, the open banking circle where we want to interact with users uh, oh yeah, more in a cooperative way. So we want to co-create and test uh, API ideas so that we can cater to the uh, to the, the we can cater our offering to the what the, our clients want. And for the more interactive part of our community, we have events and meetups. Uh, yeah, in general, for the, the portal, we find it really important that different audiences we get on the portal can find their, their job to be done as quickly as possible. So we try to make the user and the developer experience as good as, as we can, and we're really open to feedback. Um, and we hope you enjoyed this guided tour. Thank you, Brendan and Evelyn, for uh, demoing our developer portal to, uh, to everybody. I'm very proud on what the teams at AV Nemro have uh, accomplished in the last few years. Uh, and we are still on a journey. So uh, developing our API platforms, the developer portals and the first APIs have been quite a journey uh, and we uh, want to uh, proceed. So I'm uh, together with all my colleagues helping out, motivating teams within AB Namro to start thinking about good internal APIs, partner APIs, and open APIs. And uh, having this developer portal is a, cr a crucial uh, uh, part of that. And of course, to provide all those products to you as a developer or you as a business developer product owner at another company so you can innovate and build your uh, experiences, your customer experiences uh, on top. I'm looking forward to what you uh, can build and to all of those that are also developing developer portals and uh, are on the API journeys within your company. I'm looking forward to hear how you use developer portals to motivate your company uh, to uh, go along. So how do you spread the word, uh, increase your API portfolio, uh, increase the community around that and uh, yeah, that, that the whole company is becoming uh, API first. I think that we are still on a big journey together uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, learn from you as well. Thank you all and see you uh, in the future. Uh in the meanwhile, let me ask you, so um, in 2020, you have launched a new version of the portal. Um, yeah. What exactly, uh, it's a bit of a reiteration of the demo, but what changed and why did you change those things? So when we started in 2016 with developing the first develop portal, we um, there were no not, not that many developer portal around. Um, so Big Tech had some uh, developer portals. We saw that. Uh, Mastercard, uh, yeah, Mastercard had one, and um, yeah, and of course the the uh, Silicon Valley uh, Silicon Valley companies, but there were no banks or um, insurance companies uh, yeah. uh, around, um, and therefore we needed to think a lot about. Uh, ourselves, like what do we want to show, who is our user, uh, what should the uh, website look like. And we put uh, quite some effort in designing the front end. And then we uh, went for a partner to, uh, to develop that with, and yeah, this is the front end, this is what I like the portal to be. Uh, and then we started to work with that portal and uploading uh, documentation and maintaining documentation was quite uh, complex. Uh, it took uh, too long to make fast iterations. Uh, so that's something that we wanted to change. And, all, and then also the technology uh, used. So the content management system uh, got a big update throughout the year. So uh, then we decided to, uh, uh, yeah, move in a different direction and uh, uh, create a second version of the portal where um, doc ops is one of the biggest uh, changes that we implemented. So how can you maintain uh, the flexibility of a content management system so you can create uh, nice business pages, nice looking business pages, but use real uh, doc ops uh, processes with uh, uh, kids. 
to uh, push uh, technical documentation to the portal, and that's uh, that's a big inspiration. Mm -hmm. From the audience, um, what's the most appreciated feature of the portal at the moment by your customers? Um, I think that the community part is a, uh, a big one. So if I look at our portals uh, and the, the content that we provide, we really look at what other companies do uh, and not the financial industries, but um, uh, companies like uh, Netflix and really opening up the knowledge that a big company as AB Numero has uh, on Azure, on creating pipelines, on uh, all kinds of events. That's a very nice add-on besides that we're selling uh, great APIs. Uh, Evelyn, do you agree? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's really nice to see uh, the growth in, uh, for instance, the, the reads on the blogs uh, throughout this journey. So. Um, yeah, uh, as more as we post more content, more people read it, and a lot of people are going to the meetups and uh, and stuff. And what's also really nice to see is that the internal um, developer community is also connecting with the external um, community through this to share knowledge via blogs, to also learn themselves uh, about the subjects, and then uh, we share it externally. And it's a really cool thing to see. Mm -hmm. And what metrics do you do you keep track of to? To know this, like both from a technical writing point and from community building point, what do you what do you actually follow? Um, we have Google Analytics for the full uh, website, and uh, we do the developer blog on Medium, so we have statistics over there, so we can just see everything. And then we make um, yeah for API usage of, uh, internally and externally, we make an um, data analytics uh, per uh, document per uh, quarter. So that we, we have a look on yeah. how APIs are, are used and uh, how everything is uh, seen. And the, and the metrics is indeed it's, uh, the, the growth of API usage combined to the customer experiences that we uh, would like to create. Uh, and in that regard, it's interesting to see that besides that we are on a journey, our customers are also on a journey. So they are not used to banks uh, offering APIs. So uh, the, the growth of, of course, PEC2 has triggered uh, some, uh, some, some uh, usage. The Tiki API was a very useful uh, uh, API to uh, create growth. Now with the business account APIs and the others, we see it's much more that SME companies and um, bookkeeping uh, software need to uh, connect with us. Um, and so creating partnerships and uh, growing through partnerships is a, uh, um, yeah, a growth path that we want to um, yeah, uh, take on in, uh, in this year. So the, uh, the mm -hmm. metrics will be more direct in that sense. And then you also have qualitative, uh, not just quantitative feedback, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. so we monitor both how do they perceive our development portal, uh, we have a ticketing system so we can uh, measure the full support flow. So how fast is everybody getting uh, support uh, or answers to the uh, questions? Uh, and then of course, we have uh, metrics about the API usage. And that's also the quality report that Evelyn uh, uh, talked about. That we uh, combine all those analytics and share that through the teams that are developing the APIs uh, within API Nano. Mm -hmm. What's on the roadmap for the portal? <laughs> um, yeah, so what I would like the external developer portal is to grow in the amount of APIs that are relevant to the strategy of AB Numero. And that's uh, where it becomes interesting because uh, I've seen in the past companies uh, where they had a group innovation and a group innovation is developing APIs. Uh, and they create a developer portal and then they try to sell those APIs via the developer portal. Uh, but I don't have the feeling that you're then really changing the culture within your company and the strategy within your company. I really need, I think that you need to be in the genes of all the business lines uh, that they think about what is my internal architecture and how do I connect that with partners and third parties as well. 
and how do I service customers via internet banking and mobile banking and then API banking uh, next to it. And then product line for product line, grid for, uh, yeah, the business line for business line, we try to um, uh, move uh, into that direction. So growth of APIs uh, is one part, but that's then uh, also uh, the internal culture change and, um, uh, and growth of API usage. So creating partners that are helping uh, customers to implement uh, the, the processes in, into, their, uh, yeah, into their software. Um, so for the developer portal, I don't see the need to uh, really change much. It's more about the usage of the developer portal that we uh, uh, want to grow in, in the next year. And then uh, besides that, we are building an internal portal that is really directed towards that culture change. So how can you facilitate teams to start thinking about this is my internal API strategy and this is my open API strategy and how do those connect? And that's, uh, uh, so we have two portals uh, where one is customer facing and one is more internal facing on, uh, on teams and culture change. And um, more technical documentation wise, Brandon, is there a new feature that you're excited about implementing on a portal or um, you're scaling now? Yeah, so we're scaling now. And I just saw um, a question in the chat uh, that says like, um, how do we maintain our, um, our, our files and do we do separate files? So uh, currently we use um, YAML files that are stored in um, a repository. So each YAML file has its own repository that is stored in um, uh, our external project uh, folder. And we have, uh, everything is in that YAML file. So for example, we have current commands, um, samples, uh, sample responses, everything that a developer should need and um, hopefully does need is in that documentation. And um, we do two rounds of reviews based on that. So we have um, a competence center that does the technical review based on the code and the, um, say the, the language then is reviewed by the technical writers in the team. So that's how we uh, make sure that the quality is up to a good standard. And then for the overview documentation um, on the portal, we've got two different types of documentation. So we have um, an overview and reference documentation. The overview we create that ourselves. Um, so the provider team will give us some information and we'll, uh, we'll put that information on the portal as they wish and make it look good. But uh, something that we're working towards at the moment is we want to improve the way users are using Postman. So it's just so that they use the functionality of the API. Um, we're finding that it's not as easy to, so if you're not used to Postman, if you're not a Postman expert, they find it a little bit difficult. So we want to explain that better. So that's something we, we want to improve soon. Mm -hmm. One thing that I'm proud of uh, as well from the technical writing uh, perspective, I explained that we have two developer portals, but we use the same techniques, the same Docker procedures, uh, uh, pipelines for both portals. So that's also, how we really uh, centralize technical writing as a competence. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, that Git processes can be used for, uh, for uh, both. And that's, uh, that's quite, uh, quite interesting. Also kind of necessary if you want to scale things up. Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much.